Amish or peace of Hashem. But now I want to share with you a story. I want to share with you a story. I heard this story. Mamish. <laughs> yeah, it would be hard for you to believe. Quarter to ten tonight, I was preparing to come here. And my phone rings. And I see Belgium. It's a call from Belgium. In Belgium, it's not so early now. It's pretty late in Belgium. Who's calling me from Belgium in the middle of the night? So I picked up the phone. Well, he introduces himself. His name is Reb Feivel Shapiro. Feivel Shapiro is a Yid from Antwerp, from Antwerpen, from Belgia. He lives in Belgium. And he told me that he wants to share with me a story. And this is not a story of Klei Chamishi, Klei Revi, Klei Shlishi, Klei Sheni. This is a story of Klei Rishim. It's a story that happened with him himself. And he told it to me tonight, a few minutes before I came here. And I want to share this story with you. It's a very, very powerful, very moving story. His mother, Rachel, came from a Satma family. Satma Chsidim, already back in Europe before the war. His father, Ibn Aftali Hertz, was a Talmud Muvik of the Damesek Eliezer from Vishnitz. His mother was from Satmer, his father was from Vishnitz. He, all his life, davens and bells. So we have bells, Vishnitz, Satmer, Kolonik Yechot. And I'm telling the story. <laughs> Bible tells me, tells me tonight, it was one year Purim, and he came to America. He's a businessman, a well-known, affluent businessman, well-connected person in Belgium. He's an Askin, he's an activist, he's a businessman, he's a successful person. He came here once to America, he was here Purim, this was in the 1970s, early 70s. decided to go see what's happening. He wanted to check out the Lubavitcher Rebbe. So he went to Brooklyn, to the Kronite section of Brooklyn. The Lubavitcher Rebbe would hold a Purim Fabrengen, a Purim gathering for many hours, every Purim night, but so I Purim. He told me I was there. It was very, very long. He said, the Rebbe, Geret, and Geret, and Fabracht, and Fabracht, and it went on and on until late, late, the middle of the night. Two in the morning, or three in the morning, three thirty in the morning. It was very late. So the Rebbe finished, and he walked out from the big shul to go upstairs to his his room, private office, and then probably go home. He says, "By us the minig is get shulam You go and you give a shulam aleichem to the Lubavitch to the Rebbe to a Rebbe. So that's what I decided I want to do. I just want to go greet him, give him my hand. So as he was walking back to his room. I stood there on the path, two or three in the morning. He says, didn't remember the hour, but it was very late. And I stretched out my hand to give him Shalom Aleichem. He said, there were two Gaboyim around. Didn't know their names, but two Gaboyim there. They looked at me and they said, come on, Nisht Yetz is the Zeit. Nisht Yetz is the Zeit to give Shalom to Rebbe. Now is not the time to give your hand start uh, greeting the Rebbe sitting all night so I uh, you know I was new he says ich bin shockiert. I was taken aback I was shocked and I, uh, I pulled back my hands so said, but the Rebbe noticed what uh, when I stretched the man he noticed what happened so the Rebbe stretched out his hand and he took my hand so I thought he'll give me some and he wouldn't leave go he started to walk with me holding my hand he comes to his room and he takes me into his room he says, this was surprising I didn't ask him anything I didn't tell him anything I just wanted to say shalom aleichem aleichem shalom five seconds but it was near his room so he was taking with me and he took me into the room he closed the door he 
said he himself took a seat took another chair put it by his desk and he said that's the chavak sit down so I sat down I didn't know what he wants but I sat down they got by him at this point there was nothing they could do he went in he closed the door. so the Rebbe took open the drawer took out a key and he went to one of his cabinets a filing cabinet and he opened up a drawer that was locked he took out a piece of paper gives me the piece of paper and he says Nadir Lane here is the piece of paper read so revival tells me says I start reading a letter that a lady wrote to the Lubavitcher Rebbe in the early 1960s she writes to him comes from a family of Sat Mechsidim. Her husband, Vishnitz. She was diagnosed with breast cancer. She's 36 years old. She has 12 children. The oldest one is 14. The youngest one is one years old. 12 children, 14 to 1. The doctors are not optimistic about her chances to live. The cancer has spread. They say she doesn't have much time. She herself is ready to give up. She lived her life. She's ready to say goodbye. She's ready to face her maker in heaven. And she has no complaints. But she has 12 children. And that kills her, it breaks her heart. A one-year-old boy and a 14-year-old boy, who will raise them? Who will take care of them? She says, I don't know you and you don't know me. I'm asking you, I'm asking the Lubavitcher Rebbe, please look out and daven for my 12 children. Think about them, pray for them. They should grow up to be able to be happy people, wholesome people, healthy people. They should be inspired to have Yir Shamayim and Avas HaToyra and Avas Hashem and Avas Yisrael. Fear of heaven, love of God, love of Torah, love of the Jewish people. And they should follow the Derech HaToyra V'Hamitzvah. My 12 children should follow the path of Torah and Mitzvah. Signs her name. Fivel tells me she's reading the letter. He's reading the letter. She signs her name. Rachel. Reish Aleph Ches Yud Lamed Shapiro. Says this is my mother. His mother died when he was 12. He was from the oldest in the family. His oldest brother was 14. He was 12. She left seven boys and five girls. Pitzlach Kinder. Mamish Pitzlach. Little ones. And now he's reading a letter in the handwriting of his mother that she wrote shortly before she passed away in the 60s. So he tells me, so I'm sitting in the chair and I start crying. I start trembling. I didn't know such a letter. I was overwhelmed from emotion. I look at the Lubavitcher Rebbe and I say, I have one thing to ask you. The mom is gestorben so young. My mother died so young. I don't have much of her. I want to take this letter with me. I want to have it. The letter that my mother wrote to you about her family, her children, her concerns. I want to have this letter. Babacher Rebbe said, Nay, no, I can't give you the letter. And I was startled. I knew that he's a Jew who receives tens of thousands of thousands of letters. Did he really need a hold on to this letter of another tragedy? Look, here's an orphan. I didn't 
didn't have a mother so many years. I was asking for her letter. I, I couldn't understand why he would care to part from this letter and just give it to his son when he showed me the letter. And he looked at me and he said, Yeah, they are. So his language in Yiddish was Every year in Kippur, I can't go down to Shul to Davin Kol Nidre in Kippur at night before I don't read your mother's letter. This letter has to stay here. Your revival tells me the night after Purim, I stood up, trembling, I walked out of the room. Then he tells me, Ich ken sich nicht meuchel sein. He says, Rabbi Wawa, Ich ken sich nicht meuchel sein. I can't forgive myself till today. Why I didn't say Lubavitch Rebbe? How in the world did you know? who I am, and that this was my mother. I came over to you after Purim, I gave you a hand. So I, I, I can't forgive myself, why didn't I ask him? How do you know it's me? Why did you take me into a room? How do you know to put the two together? I didn't even say my name, how did you know this? So I say, why didn't you ask him? Why didn't you ask him? He said, I was so overwhelmed from emotion. When he told this to me about Kol Nidre, the first thing in the letter, and then when he told me, I was just, I was speechless. But then when I went down, I said, oh yeah, I should have asked him. So I said to five, oh, how, did, how did he know? <laughs> how did he know? And why did your mother write him a letter? So I can't tell you how he know what I say. He says, I guess, at Zach was under the Zen. Saw things maybe that other people don't see. He looked at me, so. And then he says, what happened was his follow. My father was a stark student of the Damascus Eliezer. But when he came to Antwerp, there was wanted a chsidish minion, there was Bells, he went to Bells. He used to come to America a lot, he was a successful businessman. He was involved in Macy's and other things. And he used to go visit the Heleke Divre Yoyal, the Satmir of Schisse Yogan Alaini. He said, I enjoy speaking to him, Satmir of said, as a Kliga Yid. A smart joint. He told me he would spend hours. A few times he went to him, he spent a few hours with the Satmar Rebbe. He says, I heard from my father. This is what he told me tonight. I heard from my father that once he was sitting by the Satmar Rebbe, by the Divri Yaya. They started to speak about Lubavitch. The Satmar Rebbe, he said, told my father these words. A hair, a hin, here or there. You could look at it here or there. Abalamad is looking the Amis. Let me tell you the truth. Whenever a Jew comes to me, I feel it's a situation that's too difficult for me. I can't deal with it. I don't know what to say. I said it to Lubavitcher. That's the Amis. So my father told me when my mother got so sick, and he was by the Satmer. Satmer told this to him. So he says he went to my mother. And he said an interesting thing I heard from the Satmer of that when he doesn't know how to deal with the situation, he said to love Jenebu. So my mother, without telling him, wrote this whole letter to the Rebbe because based on what she heard from my father. But nobody knew about it. Rebbe showed it to me many, many years after her passing. So I said, Lou, tell me about the family. He says, you should know that the 12 kids grew up. So spectacular people. Normal, fine people. Every person got married, built beautiful families. Start telling me where everybody is, their families, their children. At this point, the Cheshush Gehalten Cup. And then I thought to myself, this is just a personal memory, and I'm not saying it's connected. I'll just tell you an experience. I grew up in the Crown Heights section of Brooklyn. 